Hi everyone and welcome back to the Organized Notebook. In this video, we wanted to show you step-by-step -step how to build a Pomodoro timer tracker with Notion. If you're new to the Pomodoro technique, it's a system of time management where you break down your work into intervals, usually 25 minutes in length, separated by short breaks. And this is a great system if you tend to lose focus or it's hard for you to start large tasks. And we think that this is a really helpful technique for maximizing your productivity. So let's dive right in. First, let's start by opening an empty Notion page and we're going to title this Pomodoro Timer Tracker. And we're going to add a cover photo by clicking add cover and we'll click change cover and go to Unsplash, which has a huge library of stock images. And we're going to go with a green theme for this template. So let's click here. And then we're going to add an icon by clicking add icon and we will change it to the notion icons and let's go with some kind of time timer stopwatch. And now we're going to go to the top right hand corner three dots and choose small text for width. And this is going to allow us to have more space on the page. So the first thing we're going to add to this Pomodoro timer tracker is an actual Pomodoro timer. So we're going to first make two columns by typing slash column. And on this side, we're going to have the Pomodoro timer. And on this side, we're going to have the Pomodoro tracker. And now let's go ahead and embed a Pomodoro timer here. And it's a good idea to label these two columns like this, just so that you don't lose the columns. So let's actually delete this and type slash embed. And we're going to choose embed. And now let's go to the Pomodoro timer side where we can embed the Pomodoro timer. So we go to pomofocus.io and we'll leave a link to this in the description. But all you need to do is to copy this link, copy. And then if we go to Notion and we embed the link, we're going to get this timer onto our Notion page. And we've already set it to green, but you can set it to any color you want by going to the settings here and you can change the color themes. And you can even set the timer to different intervals depending on the way that you like to do Pomodoro timers, but this is a handy way to keep it, everything on the page. So let's move this a little bit to the left here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make the tracker area. So how we're going to do this now is that we're going to have a database for your tasks on top and then a table view of all your Pomodoro sessions below that. So let's go ahead and type slash gallery for gallery view database. And we're going to do plus new database. And here we're going to call these Pomodoro tasks. And for this database, we're going to go to the three dots here, go to layout, and we're first going to hide the database title by toggling this off. Next, we're going to go to card preview and click none because we're not going to add a cover photo for these. And then we're going to change the card size to small so we can fit more on the page. And that's it. So now let's actually take a look at this gallery view items and we're going to delete this which came with the default gallery view. So first we're going to title this write an essay and we're going to go ahead and delete the created date and we don't need tags here so we're going to delete that as well. Of course you're welcome to customize these properties to your needs but we're just going to delete those two for now. And instead, we're going to start adding some other properties. The first thing we want to add is a checkbox to mark something as done. And next, we're going to actually need to link this to our Pomodoro Sessions database. So we're just going to keep this like this for now. And now we're going to go under here and we are going to type slash table. And we're going to choose table view plus new database. And we're going to title this Pomodoro Sessions. And now we can go to the three dots here and click layout and toggle off show database title so it looks a bit cleaner. And now what we can do is, for example, 
just fill this in so that we can think of some ways to use the properties here. So instead of tags, what we can do is type and we can do work session or we can do a break option. So it's either going to be a work session or a break and we can change the color by going to the three dots here and let's just choose a different color so it's easy to see. So let's say this is a work session and now we need the date so that we can keep track of the time. So we're going to add a new property by clicking, clicking the plus button here and it's going to be a date property. And let's actually move the date a bit further up so we can see better. And you can also click here to freeze the column. So this way, if we fit more things, you'll still see the name of the session. And now what we can do is add another property, which is going to calculate the amount of minutes you spent on this session. So for that, we're going to need a formula. And this formula is going to show the minutes. And let's go ahead and put something in the date here so we can double check that the minutes work correctly. So we're going to just click here and you can turn on end date and include time. And we'll just put something like 9 a.m. And then we'll put the end time for 9.25 a.m. And we want this to show 25 minutes. So we're going to click here, edit property and edit formula. So now what we're going to do is we need to calculate the date between. So if we type date, then we get date between here. And then what we need to do is take the date dot date and then date end comma date and then date dot date start and then comma and then here we're going to put minutes like this and it should be correct but let's see so now we got 25 minutes which is what we wanted and finally, what we need to do is connect this database to our tasks here. So we're going to add a new property here and we're going to do a relation. Relation, and we're going to relate it to our Pomodoro tasks. So we're going to click here and let's make sure to show it there so we can see everything. And we're going to add relation. So now let's say that this session one is going to be related to writing an essay. So we can click here like this. And now if we open write an essay, we should see this Pomodoro session here. And now what we want to do is actually show the status of this task and also the amount of minutes that you've spent on this task. So for that, we're going to click here and we're going to go to plus add property and we're going to do roll up. And what we want to do is select the relation to be the Pomodoro sessions and the property to be the minutes. And we're going to calculate the sum. So now it says 25. So now we want this information to show up. So we can go to the three dots here, go to properties, and then we want to show the done and we want to show the roll up. So now we see the amount of minutes that's been spent and whether or not it's done. And let's actually rename this so it doesn't show us roll up. So we can click here, rename, and we'll just title this total time spent. And now if we hover, it says total time spent here. And now what we want to do is add a new tab here so that when a task is done, it doesn't show up here. So let's go ahead and duplicate this view by clicking duplicate. And we're going to title this done. And now what we want to do is filter it based on whether or not this is checked off. So if it's checked, then we want to see it here, save for everyone. So here we can rename this as not done. And then we can click here and it should show up in done. So now we want to show the undone ones here. So we're going to filter this. We're going to click done and we're going to click unchecked. So now we can see not done and done here. 
and the amount of minutes that it takes for each task. So you can easily track your tasks here. And let's say we have another session two, and this is going to be also from 9.30 a.m. to 9.55 a.m. And just to check, we can say that this is also for writing an essay. And then it should update here. And now it did. So it's 50 minutes here. And if you want to hide these Pomodoro sessions, you can go to the six dots here and instead choose minimal. So then they're over here instead. So this is basically how you can make your two databases. And now let's just add headings so it's clear what each thing is. So we can add the plus here and then slash heading three. And we'll title this Pomodoro sessions and then slash divider. And we can click here and rename as view all. And let's actually organize this based on time. So the date, and we're going to change this to descending so that we see the most recent on top, save for everyone. And here, let's also add a heading here and we're going to call this Pomodoro tasks and slash divider. And we will make this into heading three. And now we can just move this up here like this. And now the last thing we can actually do is also that when you click plus new here, it's going to automatically set the time that you started at. So this way you don't need to enter it manually, at least the start time of this date. So you could go to here plus new template and Pomodoro entry. And for date, you can put now. So the time when it's duplicated and then go back. And let's set this as the default template here, set as default for all views. And now when you click plus new, it's automatically going to set the current time here so that when you're done with your Pomodoro session, all you have to do is click end date and then you can adjust the end date here. So in this case, it would be like this. And you would be able to track it like this. So that's the basics of the Pomodoro timer. So now when you are starting a task, you can choose your task here, decide which one you're going to work on, and you can click here and click here immediately and then get started on your work. And then when you stop it, you can set the end date and fill in all of the information here as needed. And that's basically it. So that's the basics of creating a Pomodoro timer tracker with Notion. If you like the completed version of this template, we'll leave it in the description below. And if you have any questions, comments, or anything that was confusing about this video, feel free to let us know. And we hope to see you in the next one.